This is Matthew Cratter from Bitcoin University. Today I want to answer the question, is Solana better than Bitcoin? This is a follow-up to Yogi Berra's Bitcoin, this video in which I spoke about high transaction fees on Bitcoin. Someone was saying that Bitcoin's transaction fees are so high that no one uses it anymore. And that reminded me of the famous Yogi Berra quote, nobody goes there anymore, it's too crowded. Now Bitcoin does have higher transaction fees than many other cryptos especially other proof-of-work coins like Litecoin, Dogecoin, etc. And this is because, as I said in that video, this is because Bitcoin's real estate, its block space is highly valued by people who want strong final settlement guarantees and neutral censorship resistant money. And if another proof-of-work crypto ever became as popular as Bitcoin, it would also struggle with scaling issues. We can just check in this morning, look at where fees are on Bitcoin. This is the uh, the transaction fees right here, 57 sats per V-byte to get in the next block. These obviously move around quite a bit, but lately they haven't been going below 10 or 20 sats per V-byte. If we compare this to Litecoin, we can see that there's virtually zero marginal demand for Litecoin block space. We're at the very lowest level here of one per V byte. So there's a question from Elohim here with respect to this argument, this argument about transaction fees being high when block space is limited. With respect, this argument only works for blockchains that have less users and transaction volume than Bitcoin, right? Solana may be a project you don't like, but it has far more volume and lower fees. So it's possible to have high volume and lower fees. It's not predetermined. It's possible to improve that aspect of Bitcoin without destroying it, I think. So I wanted to respond to this comment in this video. Is Solana actually a more efficient and cheaper network than Bitcoin? I'd say the on-chain daily volume for Solana is certainly impressive, about $170 billion per day. Of course, this is probably mostly gambling and mean coins, but it's still an impressive amount of money, especially when compared to Bitcoin's blockchain, which over the last seven days, the seven-day moving average was only $47 billion. And for ETH, it was only $5 billion. So Solana is definitely leading here on on-chain daily volume. And I'll link to these two charts in the description notes below. They don't work in dark mode, so I can't show you them here, but I will link to them so you can verify for yourself. So why is Solana able to handle so much more on-chain volume than Bitcoin and do it with much, much lower fees? Well, to begin with, it actually can't handle it. Solana has a long history of the network repeatedly crashing, most recently in February of this year. And if we take a look at this article, there have been network outages almost every two months. So this is a real problem for Solana. By contrast, Bitcoin has had 100% uptime since 2013. The Bitcoin network has a much better uptime record than Solana, obviously. And this is especially amusing since Solana is a Silicon Valley darling and they still can't figure out how to compete with Bitcoin's uptime. I just pause here to say, if you're finding this video helpful, please help to support the channel. Please become a subscriber, click the subscribe button, leave a like, leave a comment, question, topic for a future video, and share this video with a friend or family member. So it is funny, what makes it even more amusing though is that the Solana network is run completely by extremely tech savvy operators and it still can't compete with Bitcoin's uptime. Bitcoin is often run by a bunch of noobs with small Raspberry Pis. Now, how do I know that Solana, the Solana network is almost run completely by tech savvy operators? Because it's impossible for the average person, it's just too expensive to run a Solana node. If we look at the requirements, CPU 12 cores or 24 threads, uh, 2.8 gigahertz base clock speed, that's not too bad. But then if we look at the RAM, 256 gigs or more, to put that in perspective, this two or $3,000 Mac desktop has, I believe, 32 gigs of RAM. So this gets very, very expensive and it becomes very technical very quickly. And if it is too technically difficult or expensive to run a node, then you end up with a network run by a few tech savvy professionals and they probably all know each other as well, a lot of them in Silicon Valley. And then all the plebs just need to trust these tech savvy professionals. That's decentralization theater. That's not true decentralization. Solana is not at all decentralized. It's not only impossible for anyone in the global south to run a Solana node due to the cost and technical requirements. It's also impossible for most people in the developed world as well. If you contrast that with Bitcoin, where anyone with a Raspberry Pi or old laptop can download Bitcoin Core or Knots 
and run a node. Here's Bitcoin Core, which you can download for free in an alternate version of the Bitcoin consensus rules, which is Bitcoin Knots. And this helps to filter out the spam as well. And the other way of running a node is you can do it through Start9. They make it really easy, as I talk about in some of my live classes. If we take a look at the size of the blockchains as well, the Bitcoin blockchain currently about 655 gigs. If we convert that to terabytes, it's only 0 0.655 terabytes. And then if we compare that number of terabytes to the size of the Solana blockchain, it's unbelievable. The Solana blockchain is already 150 terabytes. So you have the storage requirement as well for the nodes who are running this. Another thing to look at while we're at it is the Nakamoto coefficient. This is a measurement of decentralization. I believe it was invented by Balaji. It's a measurement of de decentralization for proof of stake networks. And it tells you how many nodes would need to collude to halt the chain and effectively shut down the network. And in the case of Solana, it's only 21 nodes. 21 nodes out of approximately 1,961 block producing nodes. Just say no to Solana. It's a highly centralized proof of stake network. It's a VC coin. It's a venture capitalist coin with a huge pre-mine. One of the most greedy pre-mines and pre-sales I've ever seen where 48% of the tokens were allocated to the team, to the company, and to venture capitalists. This tells you how it's been corrupted from its genesis. Solana is not even playing in the same arena as Bitcoin. Solana is just another Dino coin, decentralized in name only. So just stick with Bitcoin. There is no second best. And the sooner that you understand this, the sooner you can stop wasting your time with ship coins and start stacking instead the most sound money in the history of the world. If you enjoyed this video, be sure to hit the subscribe and like buttons. Hit the notification bell if you want to be notified when I publish my next video. And let me know your questions and comments in the comment section below. Thanks all for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.